Good morning, everyone. What you are seeing right now is a map of all the cities in the world with more than one million inhabitants as of 1950. By that time, around uh, less than one billion people live in urban areas, accounting for about 30% of the world population. Today, more than half of the world population live in cities, and the 21st century marks a new period of growth and experimentation. Um, and technology is playing an increasing vital uh, role in the way we live and the way we organize our cities. However, uh, populations are, are going much faster than we can catch up from a city building and planning perspective. So you can see the projection of the cities with more than one million inhabitants in 2025. In a few decades, we will have to build new urban environments for a few billion people, and this will happen primarily in developing countries. We are going to be faced with the need to reconfigure our shared urban experience. And here at the Sensible City Lab, a research initiative at MIT, we are working as an interdisciplinary team to anticipate various urban issues and try to study them from a critical point of view. Uh, through science and design, the lab develops and deploys tools to learn about cities so that cities can learn about us. Currently, we have around 35 people in, in Cambridge and five uh, in Singapore. The team consists of people uh, from many different backgrounds, uh, such as uh, urban planning, uh, computer science, uh, physics, engineering, uh, geography, uh, etc. At the lab, uh, we look at uh, various types of data produced by sensors and information technology and try to understand what it means for society and how we can uh, make decisions that impact our urban environments. So uh, today, I'm going to highlight several projects at uh, SCL, which seek to use data to uh, describe, to inform, and to design our shared urban experience. Um, Imagine a future where immense amounts of trash didn't pile up on the periphery of our cities. A future where we can understand the removal chain as we do the supply chain. And where we can use this technology to not only uh, understand, uh, 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 use this technology uh, to understand uh, how uh, the uh, trash uh, you know, are moved uh, around in our urban environments. So uh, in the uh, trash track projects, we attach uh, hundreds of uh, small, smart, and uh, location-aware uh, sensors uh, to uh, different types of trash so that uh, these items can be uh, followed uh, through a city's uh, waste management system uh, following the uh, final journey of our everyday object. Um, the lab had to deal with the technological challenges of uh, making the device uh, last as long uh, as possible. And uh, the even more uh, challenging aspect uh, was the lack of uh, uh, prior uh, uh, ex uh, experiments because these uh, devices were sent out to the environments uh, which were uh, far away uh, from the uh, controlled environment of our research lab. Uh, so uh, next, uh, you are going to see a short uh, visualization about uh, this uh, project. Actually, we invited 500 people in Seattle to uh, Tag their trash and uh, track them since the day of deployment. So uh, this project is an initial investigation into the understanding of the removal chain in urban areas. And it represents a bottom-up approach to uh, managing uh, resources and promoting behavior change through pervasive sensing technologies. Since we don't have recycling facilities near the borders, 
uh, which lead us to believe that some objects were being shipped illegally overseas. Uh, uh, shipping e-waste internationally is uh, illegal according to the treaties of the Barcelona Convention. And certain types of e-waste are highly hazardous due to the presence of mercury, lead, and uh, flame retardants in their components. So in this project, we uh, collaborated with the Barso Action Network to deploy uh, sensors on 200 devices, which people thought were brought to authorized recycling facilities and to be recycled uh, within the United States. And next, you are going to see a short visualization of where things uh, started and uh, where they ended up. Um, the animation shows uh, 200 trackers, and uh, the green dots are the deployment site, while the red dots are where things ended up. And uh, um, according to what we found, 65 out of 200 trackers ended up in China from uh, US. But the China has very strict uh, import and export rules on uh, e-waste. So what you actually saw is that some objects were sent to uh, other countries and uh, uh, making their way to uh, China through small boats or uh, trucks. Um, using this platform, researchers were able to map each point of the trackers' path to their final destinations. And uh, we, uh, there, uh, with GPS coordinates, the field researchers could uh, visit the site to check whether it is a recycling facility or a dump site, uh, etc. Uh, since the, uh, the time of that experiment, uh, the UN organization has confirmed that the Monkai uh, border is a prime corridor for e-waste flowing uh, from EU and US to China. So uh, the Money Tool project uh, demonstrates that new technology can be used to generate unique data needed by the civil society, uh, law enforcement, and uh, the enterprises to track uh, what until now have been hidden flows. So next, let us talk about transportation. Hopcap is an interactive visualization that invites you to explore the way in which over 170 million taxi trips connect the city of New York within a given year. It allows you to navigate to places where uh, taxi trips uh, started and end, and uh, explore how many other people in your area share the same travel patterns. By placing the two markers on the map, you will be able to see a lot of useful information about collective urban mobility. For example, the number of trips that can be shared by people traveling between two locations. And uh, the map will also highlight information about sharing benefits, such as uh, total fare savings uh, to passengers, the reductions in total miles traveled, as well as the uh, emission savings to uh, CO2. So the project uh, uh, demonstrates the vast potential of taxi shareability in New York. And based upon that, the lab uh, introduces the novel concept of shareability networks to efficiently model and optimize their sharing uh, opportunities in cities. And by applying that approach to uh, the NYC dataset, uh, our study found that uh, with increasing but relatively low passenger discomfort, uh, cumulative trip lengths can be cut by 40% or even more. Uh, however, uh, uh, the city of New York, especially the Manhattan, Manhattan area, the density of trips is uh, high, and uh, we are not sure how the uh, sharing potential would be in other cities. So by planning the methods to uh, cities such as Vietnam, uh, Singapore, San Francisco, we find that the potential of sharing a ride in the city depends on three fundamental parameters, uh, which are the area of the city, the number of trip requests, as well as the average travel speed. So, with increasing availability of ride-sharing services like Uber Pool and the self-driving technologies, we believe these two projects, Hopcat and Shareable Cities, could help urban planners, transportation companies, and society at large to shape a more sustain, uh, sustainable uh, path for urban growth. And next, we are looking at another type of trash. Underworld is a platform which uh, collects and analyzes sewage for monitoring urban health patterns. It is one of the largest uh, uh, projects that the lab has ever taken. And we are leading the project at Sensible City and are collaborating with labs in biological engineering, civil and environmental engineering, and uh, computer science and artificial intelligence. As this data is flushed down the toilet, the vast reservoir of information of uh, human health and behavior goes with it and leaves on in our urban sewage. And this resource is untapped. And the uh, 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 Underworld Project uh, proposed to develop a human health census by sampling the urban gut or city sewage. When we think about you know, sewage sampling, we often look to uh, the wastewater uh, treatment plants because that's where the majority of it occurs. However, these plants are usually many miles away from the community surf, collecting much runoff along the way. Um, 
The innovative thing about this project is that we are actually sampling through the sewage network of the city to get not only individual readings of particular neighborhood, but aggregate readings of the city. And in that way, we are hoping to create a, a real-time or near-real-time platform close to the source that could accurately represent the defined communities. Uh, uh, what you see on the lab is our first prototype, Mario. Uh, but it wasn't uh, most efficient. Highly customized components require a lot of assembly, and the fabrication was uh, slow. So the lab uh, quickly moves to the second generation, Luigi, uh, Mario's faster and slimmer cousin. Uh, Luigi uh, is uh, built using the off-shelf components, uh, which allows for uh, faster prototyping and fabrication, and who was also uh, uh, easy to deploy and uh, extremely lightweight. And next, you are going to see an inside view of the Cambridge sewer, uh, a video recently created by CNN. platform, decision makers could obtain timely information about different types of viruses and infectious uh, disease, which are critical to the prediction and mitigation of uh, urban outbreaks. Next, robot. As self-driving cars hit the road, autonomous boats are entering Amsterdam's kennels. Robot is a collaborative research project between MIT and the Amsterdam Institute for Advanced Metropolitan Solution. And the project aims to design and test the world's first fleet of autonomous boats in the city of Amsterdam. And the project aims to develop the logistic platform for people and goods, uh, superimposing a dynamic infrastructure over uh, one of the world's uh, most famous water cities. And uh, each water-based unit uh, can be used for uh, transporting uh, people and goods and for creating uh, temporal uh, floating infrastructures, such as uh, self-assembling bridges or uh, uh, concert stages. And uh, using technologies similar to that of the underworlds, the uh, robot project will deploy environmental sensors to monitor, uh, to monitor uh, the water quality and generating data uh, for assessing issues related to water pollution, uh, public health, and environment. Uh, as an ongoing project which will last for five years, uh, the robot project will demonstrate how urban waterways uh, can be used to increase uh, cities' function and uh, quality of life. Uh, last but not least, uh, Treepedia. Uh, increasing a city's uh, tree canopy uh, contributes to lowering urban temperature and mitigating air pollution. Uh, in 2015, uh, the World Economics uh, Forum uh, on uh, uh, Global uh, Council, uh, Agenda Council on Future Cities has included increasing urban canopy cover in their list of top 10 urban initiatives. So, uh, as cities around the world are raised to implement this uh, green canopy strategy, we have implemented a metric, the Green View Index, to compare and evaluate uh, green canopy cover uh, in cities. And uh, uh, the Green View Index was calculated uh, based on the Google Street uh, images, uh, Google Street View panorama. And uh, the method uh, considers the obstruction of trees and classifies the uh, images accordingly. Um, initially, uh, the Tripita project launches in 10 global cities, such as uh, Boston and uh, Geneva. And now we have received a request from more than 100 cities uh, for their Greenview uh, index. And in the future, uh, the uh, users will have the possibility of adding uh, unique tree information uh, onto an open source uh, street map and request that uh, trees to be uh, planted uh, in uh, certain areas. So. Uh, that actually uh, concludes my presentation for today. So for uh, more information about the interesting projects at lab, please visit sensible.mit.edu. Thank you. <laughs>